Welcome to Dramana Promontory Fort in Fingal. This is an Iron Age promontory fort, famous for its contact with the Roman world. This is season three of our community-based research excavation, where we have a mix of professional archaeologists and volunteers from the community uncovering the secrets of Dramana. So the reason why we've chosen to open a trench here is that there is a trackway extending from the northeast of the promontory all the way to the ramparts here. You can't see it on the ground. It's on um, satellite photography, aerial photos, geophysical survey and hillshade models. It could be 200 years old, it could be 2000 years old and that's what we're here to investigate. So the first thing we do with an excavation is we lay out a trench and then we remove the sod with our mattox shovels and wheelbarrows. Below that is topsoil and again we take that off to reveal the features beneath. Here we have a stone dump with slabs of stone. We had a very stony surface that had furrows ploughed into it. We take things off in layers and record as we go so we can tell what comes from what area and build up a picture for interpretation when we're finished on site. So when we were digging down, we exposed this spread of stones. Uh, some of them look like they're set into the ground, others are just tumbled. Uh, so before we remove them all, we want to record where they all were and what the surface looked like. Um, so I'm using what's called a planning frame, which is just a grid, like a piece of graph paper, and I'm transferring what I see through the grid onto a grid on a board in front of me at a scale of one centimetre to 20 centimetres. So every 20 centimetres here is one centimetre on my board. Um, and when we've completed all this, we'll measure the heights of all of these, um, and then we'll have a record of them uh, going forward and we can take them out without worrying that we've lost any information about them. What I'm doing here this morning is troweling uh, and trying to find uh, if we have a, a plough furrow. We think that this feature coming here is the bottom of a furrow and we have a ridge here and over here and this extends down um, south of me here and what I'm trying to find is where the edge um, of the uh, furrow on uh, each side and taking the material out from that. We found a lot of um, animal bone um, in, the, in, the, in the soil and uh, what we do is we uh, keep this, keep it separate so that we know exactly what came from the furrow and came from the uh, area uh, surrounding it. Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a fourth year student uh, studying archaeology in UCD. So that's how I found out about this community dig in Germana. At the moment I'm doing some sieving. So basically any of the soil that comes out of the trench is brought over and put in piles behind me. And all of these piles are labelled with a number um, that refers to the feature in the trench that they came from. So what we do is we'll fill a bucket with some dirt and we'll put the dirt into the sieve. We'll shake the sieve and we'll go through all of the um, kind of this little stone and everything and try to see if we can find anything. So if we find any bones or anything like that we put it in a fine tray. So this is a fine tray which is labelled with the same number as the flag from which the pile from which the dirt came from in the pile um, and it also relates to the feature. So then we have different things like bone and uh, little bits of stone which will then go over to professionals like Siobhan and she'll look through them to see to decide if there is anything there. We photograph everything on site as part of the record. It's a process which has a kind of connection to the drawing. So it's part of the, the record. It goes with the drawing so you get different ways of looking at things. Um, what we use here to, to do this is ranging rods. And you can see they have marks on them giving a 10 centimetre scale. And what we do is we place these on the ground next to the archaeology so that we can tell what size these things are in the photographs. So you place them down. But that's not just that though. We need to know a bit more about it. So like having like this board here describes all of the kinds of things in this in this photograph. It has a site code, the site name, Dramana, the season, this is the third season we're here, and the fourth trench. It says furrows but that's yes okay and then it has numbers now each feature has a number, so we can see which feature is there. And then we have the date and some any other information we want to put on this board goes on it. And that goes into the photograph in a position where it doesn't obscure the archaeology, but what it does is tell us what it is. Now the one thing I didn't put in here is the north arrow. Because what we want to do is to show the orientation of it for mapping purposes. So in cartographic terms, we need to know where north is. 
My name is Siobhan and I'm the finds and animal bone supervisor for the site. So here we get all the trays of animal bone. They come here and we're going to log them in our, in our animal bone register and then bag them up in the nice bags. So we put them all separate. So in this tray we have quite a good selection of animal bone. We've got some cattle foot bones. We have pig teeth and we have a leg bone from a little baby lamb. So this is probably the remains of somebody's food, their dinners that they had, so we can tell when they're all cleaned up and we get them looked at, we can tell what they were eating, what animals they had on the site and even uh, maybe some of the things they made because they used bone to make pins and beads and a number of different things. Before there was plastic, that's what they were using. We have a number of different types of pottery showing up, which we're quite excited about because they're all from uh, Roman Britain and further beyond. So this is a shirt from a large amphora jar that would have come from Spain and have brought olive oil to Dramana back in maybe the second century AD. This is a smaller, from a smaller bowl that somebody would have used to store their food in and it's from around the same era. And here we have two types of tableware. So these were the fancier pottery they had that they would be serving their dishes in. This in particular is Samian ware, which is the famous Roman pottery. We're very excited to find these because they're not normally found in Ireland and the only other place that it has been found in any numbers is at Tara. So Dramana is very unusual to have all the different types of pottery. This is a per perfectly spherical stone as you can see and this is likely to have been a ballista shot or catapult shot that was used as a missile. So before they had bullets and metal cannonballs, they made them out of stone. The other thing we're very excited about finding on the site is we've found some glass beads. So this is a fragment sorry, from a large Roman bead that has little grooves all around the edges. And this is known as a melon bead. As you can see, it's a nice clear blue glass. This one it's very different, it's red glass and it's a smaller bead and this would have been around the same age as the melon bead. And then our third bead that we found so far is a little dark blue one and as you see it looks like two beads stuck together but it was made that way purposely and it's got little speckles of white and red glass to decorate it. So these would have been not necessarily strong on a necklace, sometimes they would have been used as just a single ornament, maybe to put in your hair or put on the top of a pin or just to decorate a brooch. I'm Seamus Murray, I'm from Scarries and this is my third dig here at Dramanach. Um, Dramanach for me is uh, a, quite a special site because it's a crossroads in uh, history. So we have just the Britannic Britain over there and we have Roman Britain over there and this here was a conjunction for the cultures meeting. So we've no evidence I think of uh, Roman invasions or anything like that but we have lots of evidence of trade and we have our Roman finds here. So this site is um, a special site, different than um, other sites in the country. So I've always been interested in history and when I retired I did a history degree with the Open University. So um, this archaeology then is a, a means by which I can keep in contact with my interest in, in history and I keep coming back here. I love doing this, it's the history of the place. I love walking my walks along here, I love my beach, I love everything about it and as a result I love to find out bit of history about it, you know, what went before us. Because uh, we just don't know what you'll find. I love it. I'm trying to try to find I'm trying to find something that I'll really be excited about and I can say, Eureka! Look what I want to find them! <laughs> Haven't found it yet. 
found plenty of bones and teeth <laughs> of cattle. We do it because we love it, we have an interest in it. It's not very often that it, people that have an interest in something but not a profession can get a chance to come out and be part of a dig and we have been doing it for the last seven years. It, it's just so interesting it, what you find, the process, the camaraderie between people and that's the main reason, one of the main reasons I enjoy it so much. We are of all race, creed, everything, but the one thing that we have in common is archaeology and we just have such a great time because we have that in common. So with excavation you're systematically taking things apart, so the most important part of that process is the record. Um, you've seen how we plan, how we photograph. We also have context sheets or feature sheets where we fill in the dimensions, descriptions um, and cross-reference with other features on site. So we have um, an, the, the essential record of the site and the idea would be that we could reconstruct the site if it came to it. Um, that, it's that level of detail. Now that we've finished on site at Dramana, we've all relocated here to Swords Castle to continue on with the post-excavation process. So we found lots and lots of animal bones at Dramana. So we have a team here of willing volunteers who are all washing the bone because they're very muddy when they come out of the site. But then when they're nice and clean, they look like this so we can tell which animals they're from. And this is from the neck of a cow. So you can see it's a very big animal. But then we have smaller animals as well. So this is a pig bone from this part of the pig. And we also have mm, foot bones from cattle. Most of the bones we're getting are from, from cows. We have lots of teeth bones, which are very big. And we have people busy brushing the teeth, which is not quite the same as brushing your own teeth, but we like to get them as clean as possible. When I was smaller, I had a huge uh, interest in archaeology. And when I came across um, the chance to do this, I did a couple of days at the dig and found some pottery and some bone and some interesting things. So I wanted to come to the wash just to see what the final um, pieces were. If you notice this bone, it's very different from the others. So it's turned white and it's got cracks in it. And this is because it was in a fire. So that's been fully burnt. But if you look at this bigger bone here, you can see where it's black compared to the normal bone. And this is because it was also in a fire, but for a lot less time. So here we have some toe bones from some of our animals. And you can see the differences in size. So this is from a cow, which is very big compared to this one, which is from a sheep. And then this one, which is like this, but chunkier, is from a pig. And it's the same, we, here we have arm bones. If you want forelimb from the front leg. So this is from a pig, and then this one is from a sheep. So you can see they're slightly different in size. But if you look at the leg bone from a cow, you can see how much bigger a leg bone from a cow is because it's a much bigger animal. This is a small bit of an antler, and you can see where somebody has cut into it because they were using the antler to make things like bone combs. We found some of the bone combs on site that might have been made out of antler like this. So here we have the shoulder bone from a cow. And you can see here these long lines where somebody has been using a knife to take the, the meat from the shoulder blade so that people could then have the meat for their lunch. And then this got thrown out because it wasn't needed anymore. But we're left with the, where the blade was so we can tell that that's what they were doing with it. This is the very top of the leg bone from a cow and you can see there's a nice circular hole going all the way through it and this hole was made by somebody because when they had finished with the bone for their meat they just cut off this because it's nice and round and they drilled a hole through it so it becomes a spindle whirl so they put a stick through that and then they'd use it before spinning wheels. That's how they used to spin their thread, wool into thread, to make their clothes. So what did we find out from our season three excavations at Dramana? 
Firstly, the trackway we were initially investigating turned out to be a very late event in the history of the site. Instead, we uncovered a really interesting structure. Cut into the ground so you would have to step down into it, away from the elements, this structure had a stone footing and wooden posts. We can tell from the large amount of animal bone that there may have been some craft manufacture and possibly textile production happening here. The artefacts indicate that activity at Tramana dates to the 1st to 3rd centuries AD, so about 2,000 years ago. We can also build up a picture of the people who were here. They were drinking from glass vessels, storing and serving their food on imported pottery and using olive oil from Spain. Specialist analysis is underway, which will enable us to find out even more detail. There will be a seminar of the interim results in spring 2023 and hopefully a season four of excavation in the summer. Keep an eye on Fingal Heritage and other social media for updates. Further information about the project and reports from previous seasons are available on the fingal.ie website at Digging Dramana. Thank you to all of this year's participants for a great season. Thank you.